Why, hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Olnock. I'm an artist and I work in a lot of different mediums and lately I've been on a colored pencil kick. So you're going to get some colored pencil today and I have some good news for you. One of which is that one of the things I've been working on is finally finishing the Polychromos to Prismacolor, Prismacolor to Polychromos conversion chart. And it is free for you to download. Yay for free. But I've also added to the top of that page some donation links because I've had enough of you commenting that you feel bad that I'm giving away so much for free and maybe I'm dumb giving away so much for free. I don't know. But you can make a donation through a variety of whatever your favorite way to give is and buy me a cup of coffee or buy the dogs maybe a little snack. They, they like snacks. So that chart is available for you. There's also potentially going to be a new class coming up very soon in colored pencil. I am very excited about the idea that's in my head and maybe by my next video, I'll have it done. I don't really know. But what I want to talk about today is part of a drawing that I've been working on for about a week or so. I had my colored pencils out obviously because I was working on the chart and I wanted to try using the colors that are in the chart and see if I'm missing anything that needed to be in the chart. That was the main gist of trying to make the, the drawing itself. But I also wanted to make something that I wasn't sitting in front of the camera for. If you're a video maker, you understand the pressure that it is to turn a camera on. And if you're not somebody who films yourself, try doing that and see what it does to your creativity. <laughs> For me, it just keeps me from learning and experimenting because even though I sometimes experiment on this channel live for you, I generally like to have some idea of what I'm going to teach and that stuff's running around in my head and I don't end up doing as great a job on the artwork. So most of this drawing has been done already. So you're going to not get to see all that part, but you will see the part that I think is a really good teaching moment because it was a big moment for me. I started using one of my soft pastel tools. This sucker actually worked really nicely on pastel matte paper with the colored pencils. And I will be using the uh, Prismacolor brand today. And yeah, let's get started and see what happens. The photo reference is from Paint My Photo, and it's a Kingfisher that I've been wanting to do something with for quite some time. I love the action in it. I love the fish in the mouth. And I had a great time sitting with the dogs on the sofa, working on this first portion of it and getting it to at least this stage before adding a lot more to it. But I realized as I was doing that background above the bird, that that might be something that I could post here on YouTube. So you might have an idea then how you could try doing some bokeh in rainbow colors because you know it's June people do lots of rainbow stuff in June and that just seemed to be appropriate now I did make a lot of mistakes in this I was very very grateful that I was using pastel matte because pastel matte is very forgiving you can just keep layering and layering and layering and layering and layering you do reach a point if you use heavy pressure where you kind of can't keep layering anymore. So beware of that. But the reason that I chose dark paper is because more of this drawing was going to be dark than light. And the reason that that matters is that even though I'm going to have to work harder on getting the light parts layered enough that they pop and that they're bright, the blending in the dark areas is going to be significantly easier. Think about it when you're using white paper and you have a texture show up in anything that you're drawing because you see all those white flecks. Those are the valleys in the paper. Your pencil is sitting on the peaks. If you, know, if you just kind of mentally picture that texture and you need to fill in all those valleys. That's, that's the object of getting it to be smooth. And when you're using blending solutions or pressure or burnishing or anything else, the, those valleys are getting filled in when your entire drawing is mostly darks, then it's going to be really easy to blend the dark areas because you're going to have that dark paper 
to blend it with and it's not going to be that textured. And so that was why I chose to use the darker of the paper. Uh, the paper pads come with a variety of values in them, some lights and some darks and everything in between. But when I sat down at my desk and saw my pastel blending tools, I said, hmm, I think I might need to try the pastel blending tool on the colored pencil. This colored pencil does sit on the surface. It's movable. I've used all kinds of tools to move it around. I've used my finger. I've used cotton balls. I've used Q-tips. I've used blending stumps. I've just never thought to use a soft pastel blender because it just seemed like it was so soft. How could it possibly do any good? Well, on the light areas, it did not do me very much good. Aside from the fact that it kept me from building up the color too quickly, because I did feel myself being forced to try to get more dense with my lights so that they would fill in faster. And when I went back in over top of this, after having lifted off some of the color, that was when I started being able to really brighten up some of the areas that I wanted really bright. And so that was helpful in that way in particular. But the soft pastel blending tool when I worked on the darks, you will see in just a moment, is like magical because the dark areas, like I said, are going to be blending with that darker paper. And it's like butter to blend all those really rich dark sections. The only places I was fighting in the drawing was the lights and trying to bring them up and make them brighter instead of you know, kind of being dullish types of light colors. And the, one of the other mistakes that I made in this, one of the big mistakes, and you'll see it kind of getting fixed later, is the big white dot up in the upper left. I kind of needed to have something as a focal point to balance out but not really a focal point because it's going to be so soft. Look at that. Look at that blending on the darks. Oh my gosh. That was so much easier than it's ever been on white paper. Wowzas. Anyway, that big white circle, that big white polka dot, I made that one and the yellow one. I made them bigger because I wanted to have some more traditional polka dots in this. I didn't want everything to be as soft and mushy and kind of small shapes as I made on the right hand side because I wanted to have a contrast where the light was actually coming through the forest because I was picturing a forest with a bunch of trees in it and then a burst of bright light. That white was going to be to balance out the white in the water, the, the splashing. And I just wanted something of very light value up there. But that did not end up looking very good. <laughs> so I decided I was going to try to turn it into a light coming through forest, the forest trees. And I was looking for references then about what it looks like when you're looking into a, a forest that's all blurred out. And there may or may not be bokeh in it, but when it's all blurry and the light is coming from behind, what do those trees look like? And I found some references where the trees were darker in the center and then they were lighter as the branches came out and fuzzier and fuzzier. So creating those shapes on top of this white dot that I had created and made in here started making it feel more like an opening in the forest. And I brought some of the lights down right over top of the black area, that dark area. And I was able to start creating a push pull between it all. And eventually I had to go in with some, some gold colors in there because then it started feeling like it was really cold up in that area of the forest because it was all blue. But it was just a lot of fun to kind of play with the layering in this entire drawing. I brought some trees in over on the right hand side by just adding some more light colors over the darks. And that just started adding to the fact that there was this kind of magical forest appearing in the distance. But it was all so out of focus because I could get the blending using that, that blending tool. Uh, you can use, again, lots of other things to blend it with, but you can start to see also that I've carved down some of my bokeh shapes. You know, that big yellow bokeh dot that you saw me working on, I carved it down, sharpened up a few edges. So some of it was hexagonally shaped and some of it is not, that kind of thing. Eventually I added some color just down here in the bottom 
or the ground that is right beside the pond that I'm picturing my bird uh, fishing in and added some darks underneath of it so I could get some shapes, blending a little bit of it here and there, using some gray on top to start to create a bit of light sitting on top of some of the, the rocks that might be on the side there. But I was trying really hard not to delineate anything very carefully in any of this background because I really didn't want the focus to be there. I wanted all that magic in the, the bokeh dots to be there as the supporting character. And with a lot of art, much of it is trying to figure out how to keep your main character your main character, how to, how to let the star be the star and not really get lost in a lot of the other details. But taking off of the tape is always the best part of pretty much any piece. And uh, yeah, this was a really fun drawing. I hope you might try it sometime. If I do a color pencil class, it's probably going to be on a white pastel mat. So if you're interested in trying some and you want to get a pad, make sure you get some that has some white in it so you can sign up for the class. It's going to be another kind of rainbowy thing. So stay tuned for that hopefully very soon. Don't forget to go pick up your conversion chart for Polychromos and Prismacolor. And you can make a donation over there if you wish. You could also do that right here on YouTube. There is an icon that is heart shaped down below the video. At least if it's still 2024 and they still haven't moved it, then you can make a donation that way if you appreciate all the free content you get here on this website from moi. And I will see you again on Tuesday with more colored pencil. In the meantime, go out there and create something every day. I'll see you later. Bye.